Hi everyone, Louis from Zez Retro here. If you missed my previous video about the Sega Master System that was produced entirely for the Soviet Union in 1990, check the card above. Today, I've got another obscure item from my collection from Japan. It's this box. This is the YR421 S video to RGB encoder. It's made by Sony and it's going to allow you to convert S video to RGB. It's not some magical resolution enhancer or upscaler or something like that. It will simply take whatever you are giving it over S video and encode it in a similar quality over RGB instead. Now, what makes this unit interesting is that first of all, it respects 240p, works totally fine with 240p, whatever you give it, that's what it's going to output. Uh, this model is the NTSC model made for Japan. It was also produced in PAL territories as well with a PAL version. Now, typically this comes with the JP21 connector on the end, that's the output. Uh, now, we know that JP21 is the Japanese SCART. It's physically the same. It's just got the pins have been rearranged. Now, the reason this unit is a one of a kind is because it has been modified on the end. The JP21 connector has been taken off and some Japanese guy has added this box, which has got RGB and sync as BNCs. It's already broken out for you. And so in today's video, we're gonna look inside of this and understand why did some Japanese bloke in the late 80s feel he needed to modify this unit with this box. Let's go. Now, I got this unit myself when I was in Japan several years ago. I believe it was a hard off in the north of Osaka. I was walking around the junk section in the back. You see this in Cody, you think this is cool. And then you're like, what the hell is this box on the end of it? It was 10 bucks. Uh, at first I was like, hmm, because 10 bucks goes a long way in the hard off store. But I'm very happy I decided to pick it up, open it up and see what unique stuff is happening inside. It's hard to track down uh, information about when this unit was sold. The best information that I've been able to find is a reference to it in a Betamax catalog from 1987. This is a professional level Betamax unit. And as you can see in the catalog here, it is listing the various accessories that you can get for this unit. And one of them is this S-Video to RGB encoder. It seems that the Betamax unit only came with S-Video output. And they're saying, if you need to use this with a more professional monitor, then this is the accessory you could get. Now the front of the unit is very sparse. It's only got this one power button and LED to show that the unit is powered on. The back of the uh, unit has more inputs though. We've got the S video in, we've got audio in. Moving over, we're seeing that we've got picture adjustment controls here. Let's talk about the output of this box. So there was a JP21 connector on the end and typically that's got your RGB signals coming out. Now the thing is, the special thing about this is the sync signal. At the time and really for the next 10 years or more, Sony had a weird bone for sync on green. It didn't want to just put a pure C-sync signal down that line. It was a sync on green signal instead. And that's what this unit outputs over its JP21 connector. Now this alludes to why this box was modded in the first place. It seems that our Japanese friend in the late 80s didn't want sync on green. What he wanted was pure C-Sync and that is the core of the modifications. Let's look into it. The first thing which strikes me is that it's really neat and the box looks clean and looks kind of retro-y. If we open up this box, the story behind it comes to light. The first thing I noticed was how neat and tidy the mod work is. Someone clearly had skill and took their time to do this 
properly. Looking at the wiring, we can see that the red, green, and blue wires are routed directly to the BNC plugs. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. However, the breadboard and the IC are what makes this box really interesting. It seems the original owner of this unit needed to get RGBS output and that the sync on green wasn't going to cut it for their purposes. And their solution was to add this box with the BNC plugs and include a sync stripper inside. So this is part of the reason I wanted to show you this unit today. The original unit on its own would be interesting enough, but there is a story here. Some Japanese bloke really needed RGBS and he wasn't sure how else to do it. Because in 2021, we have so many options in the retro gaming community. You could just be getting uh, maybe a JP21 to SCART converter from retro gaming cables, maybe getting some BNC to female SCART solution that and we, we've got versions of this sync stripper that are now so small that they fit inside of the head of a JP21 or SCART unit. We've got loads of options these days, but I imagine back at the end of the 80s, this didn't exist. All that this person had to use was a sync stripper chip and probably what they could get at their local store. There was no way to order this in. And I like that this box on the end, it's big. Like it's way bigger than it has to be. You can see there's so much free space in there. The person who did this really wanted to do a proper job. And as we're gonna see in a moment, it's kind of almost meant to sit as a real big physical thing on top of your professional monitor. I like this. I like that someone took the time to mod this unit. And now like 33 years later, it is pretty much as solid as it was when the day it was made. There's a little bit of slight corrosion on the BNC plugs. I could possibly replace them. It wouldn't be too hard, but they're not too bad. And I kind of like keeping it modded stock right now. It's, it's kind of cool. So why the hell do you need to convert S-Video to RGB without any sort of resolution enhancement in 2021? Look, I don't have a great use case for it, but I wanted to find some way to hook this up and test it out. What I've got here is a Sony BVM9044D. This unit uh, accepts S-Video, it accepts composite, it accepts RGBS, and also component video. It's a nice, flexible little BVM, and it's small, it's portable, it's one of my go-to monitors. The issue with this unit though, is that for some reason over composite and S video, it only comes out in black and white. I'm gonna be using a Japanese Super Famicom. This is a one chip model. And I also have a proper RGB cable for this unit so we can do some comparison tests. And I I'd sort of, feel that this mod even had thought put into how it would be laid out. You can put the black unit next to your monitor. The cable running to the small box is really long. There's plenty of play to position that box right at the back of your screen. And then all you need are four very short BNC cables to connect it up. These ones here are really short. I got them used from a local broadcaster. Uh, I believe they were using a BNC patch panel. They work perfectly here. This unit works totally fine with 240p. Now, I don't have the facilities to do a lag test right now. However, just by taking a visual inspection of the inside of the black box, I would say, there is no lag in this unit. There's no frame buffers on these 1987 ICs. This is all being sent straight through with no delay. So here are some shots of the three different signals. We've got the black and white direct S video into the monitor. That looks quite nice, actually. It looks quite okay, uh, quite crisp, besides the lack of color. If we go over to the sRGB encoded version, then we could see that there's definitely the color bleeding on red, which is the first thing. And there's also slight color bleeding on blue as well. I would dare say by eyeballing it though, that the converted version of S-Video is actually slightly less 
resolution than the original S video version. Finally, to cap it off, here is the direct RGB output into the monitor, and we can see that this looks crisp, clean, and beautiful. So why does this unit bleed red and blue? My best guess would be that after 33 years, the capacitors have gone a bit off spec. Completely normal. If you look inside of the unit, you see that there is no leakages happening right now, so it's not an immediate problem. However, in an upcoming video, I'm gonna do a recap of this unit, and we're gonna test to see if that is actually the cause of the problem. Thanks for watching, guys. This is the end of the video. This is the sort of reason that I am into retro gaming. This unit isn't expensive. The, the, the original console isn't particularly rare, but this is a one of a kind, unique modification made by someone back in the late eighties. And they love these stories. And I love that I can have this unit today, preserve it. And there's a little bit of history transferred here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos, I've got some links happening here right now. We've got the story of the Soviet Sega Master System. And if you have been to Japan and you are missing Hard Off, then I recommend listening to the Hard Off theme song. Sometimes I just fall asleep to it and remember the good old days when we can travel. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.